Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. The Spectrum. I'm sure you've seen one of these. These are the new ZX Spectrum clone, much like the C64 and the Amiga before it. You can see you've got HDMI out, a whole mess of USBs, and then your 5 volts USB-C power supply, which unfortunately has a special one because the case is a little bit too deep for most of them so that was a gotcha for me so yeah do unwrap that one if you've got it um, in terms of how it feels when you're using it it's very good I've actually quite enjoyed this thing I've never really enjoyed the ZX Spectrum and uh, it's not really one of those things I've rated however this is a way better experience at it so if you want to have a go at a ZX Spectrum, I think this is a way in. Um, or if you want to have actual hardware, do the Plus 2, do the Allen Sugar ones. So I did think I would like to have a look inside this thing. And by the way, um, from most aspects, it feels really legit. Even the plastic is slightly, like you can see it looks slightly warped, slightly banana-y. Uh, the screws, everything has that vibe of the uh, original ZX Spectrum. So I'm going to open it up. Now, I did have a look in some of these previously because I do have the Commodore 64 Maxi. And I don't think I've opened it up on a video, but I have opened it up and it was reasonably underwhelming. Like a lot of these minis, they tend to have a system on chip that's doing everything. And I suspect the whole setup for this guy is exactly the same chips that they're using, the same setup in the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. I really don't see any need for them to change. Uh, I think if they're adequately emulating those systems, I think they just keep reusing the same hardware. So let's open it up. That's those screws. I'm hoping there isn't a screw here. I don't like it when there's screws under labels. It seems a bit nasty when they do that. Serial number 436. What's your serial number, by the way, if you've got one? That'd be quite interesting. It'll give us an idea of how many are out there. Is this an early mod? Seems quite early. Okay, we'll flip it over. Oh my word. Okay, that's super interesting. One. <laughs> Uh, this keyboard interface reminds me of the actual Spectrum. It had exactly that. I wonder if this is made in exactly the same way then. It, it, it's even possible that it could be the replacement Spectrum membranes that are in here, you know, and you buy them. Um, but it's definitely got this same vibe. I'm going to unplug that. Wow, we used to knacker them all the time. And I remember trying to fix them up by trying to clean those contacts and you know, your keyboard's going a bit duff. I actually do have uh, a Spectrum in the front office, which does have a knackered keyboard. I might have to look at it again after seeing this. Now let's zoom in here. There is a nice little, uh, m m m I don't know what you call them. It, I was going to say a memento, but you know what I mean. The, the word escapes me. But uh, yeah, in memory of Sir Clive Sinclair, 1940 to 2021, and Richard Dickinson, 1957 to 2008. With thanks to you both from the team at RGL. That's quite a nice little touch in that, isn't it? Clearly they expect you to be digging around in this. And... There we go, there's not really much else here. Um, it looks like, obviously, a bunch of weights bolted in to give it some mass. Otherwise, this thing will just be skidding all over your desk because you do play directly on it. And I haven't even bothered plugging a joystick in it or joypad because I think the correct way to play ZX Spectrum is by using the rubber key keyboard. And it was fine. Better than I remember. I think maybe this keyboard is just the best version of this type of keyboard that you can get. Surprisingly thick, actually, when I'm squeezing this here. There's a lot of support under that. And I don't really remember how that was done on the original. Again, at certain angles, you can see that dishing. It does have that banana -y shape, just like the original. So what you have here, it looks suspiciously like a USB hub. And the reason I am saying that is because if we zoom in here, there's two giveaways. One, it has a USB host controller there from the look of it, because <laughs> it has its own crystal and uh, various electronics there. And you can see here there is an additional button there that you use uh, to enter a certain mode mid-game. Or in fact, yeah, that's the home button. That's the home button. And then if we look through here, you'll actually see on the PCB that there are your USB pinouts. So you've got your 5 volts, 
your ooh, it does look like a D minus, D plus, and ground. And then you have a few additional pins. Now, if we move over to the other side, you can see here, there's your five volts and ground pins exposed and your USB pins, but you also have H and key. Now, I suspect key, if we look at it, will be connected up to this button. And in fact, maybe both of them. So we don't really know how this button's connected. It could be one wire that's going to ground that when you're pushing that, it's pulling it to ground or it's joining H and key, who knows? We could buzz it out. And you can see, just looking here, you do have the USB pins exposed again there's your five volts d plus ground but you've also got two pins here marked looks like oh actually i don't know i was going to say eight and seven but does that look like a b on its side perhaps and then you've got this test pin so very interesting if you wanted to add some internal hardware you could possibly tap into that in fact maybe this controller chip actually goes out to four USBs and that is an internal a USB that's not used. So you could wire an internal gadget into here. I don't know what you'd want to put in here, but you certainly could. Maybe, I don't know, a wireless joystick or wireless keyboard, something like that. Moving over to the left, let's have a look at, oh my, my, Ooh, 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 look at what we're seeing here. I got a bit excited there. You could see I was a bit breathless because I think is this possibly the same board that's fitted in the Commodore 64 of upside down? It does say the Spectrum. The reason I'm saying that is because it looks like here you have a power button on the side and two USBs. And if I remember from my Commodore 64 variant of this, that's where they were located on that device. I can see here a little button here. So there might be an, a super reset here. I'm guessing uh, this was probably a, a NAND flash. Uh, and that could be a, a bit of RAM, something like that, right? Everything is inside this big uh, modern day equivalent of a blob chip. I think there is an IC under there that we're not gonna delid. Um, we'll take the heatsink off and that's gonna be your main processor here. Clearly running something like Linux. I don't think it's running any other kind of RTOS, just Linux. And then there's your other USB that's on board, HDMI, USB-C for power. Um, can't tell if the data pins are connected, but there's a possibility there. I mean, there's a lot going on here. Maybe. I'm just that's, that's a maximum amount, maybe. Try plugging it into your PC and seeing if you get anything pop up. If not, plug it into your PC, maybe holding this button down, see if you get anything pop up, or plug it in and then hit this afterwards. You know, combinations of the buttons. There could be a debug mode on there. And then I think this is just a duplication of this power. In fact, I think I can see the track running from here across to here. Let me zoom in for that. So that's interesting, right? So I suspect if you uh, did go into one of the Commodore 64 ones, or maybe the Amiga, I haven't looked inside one of those, or bring up a, one of their boards, you might find it looks really similar. And you could find that possibly if you just change this between them, this is where all the all the uh, flash is. This will be where all the, the operating system and programming everything will reside. But I wonder how these are field programmable. I do think there are um, firmware updates. I'm pretty sure I've installed on once from the USB. So there might be a little bit of bootloader on there that can do, stop these getting bricked. But there you go, that's kind of fascinating. Um, I'm not gonna take these out. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think there's anything on the other side of these PCBs. But in terms of hackability and um, modability, whew, I think you've got limited scope here. I mean, it might be possible to add those USBs back in and have more joystick ports and see if it recognizes them in addition to these ones. You could attach a USB device either to uh, probably these pins here or these, but I'm not sure what will get you. The only thing that might be recognized is a USB joystick. So I would probably test them first by plugging them here. You know, if you've got a dongle that's got a joystick or a keyboard or a mouse, see how they work and see if the software recognizes them on there. And then you could do an experiment of wiring them internally if you wanted to keep these free. I don't know really if it's much of a, bur a burden though, is it to have a dongle sticking out of something like this these days? You've got a whole, all your HDMI and everything are coming out of it anyway, so it's not really getting in your way. Let's see if we can put this back together. I suspect it shouldn't be too challenging. So these were pre, these aren't really pre-ribbon cables. These are just cables that are coming off the membranes. I wonder how 
technologically advanced they were at the time. I mean, you see that a lot. So the way you order that is you send your artwork basically to a company, which would be maybe your keyboard layout or something like that. And they'll just make you that. And I'm pretty sure they make it by you know some sort of printing technology or lithography. And then you've got your own custom membrane. And if you ever look around in your house, you'll be able to see what things use those from end, you know, the really common things are your microwave, devices like this where you push these. I mean, these are the same but have caps uh, fitted. Your refrigerators, your washing machines, all those things. Uh, and it's an interesting concept. I wonder if Sinclair ever thought maybe they'd just release a version of this with domed clicky caps instead of actual rubber keys on there. So there could have been an even worse user experience. I feel though that the ZX81 was somewhat uh, like that. It, it didn't have uh, rubber keys for sure, and it just it just had the membrane on there. But I don't remember them being particularly clicky, just a horrible kind of keycap. So there you are. I hope that was interesting, and you uh, enjoyed this delve down into this the Spectrum Retro, which <laughs> I'm pretty sure that said Sinclair originally. Um, I'm sure if it's at Spectrum, Sinclair Spectrum. I'll have to go look. Um, but yeah, if it's um, the time of year when I'm recording this, which is coming up to Christmas, I wish you all the best for season. And of course, a happy new year. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye. Spectrum. <laughs>